Solving trig equations in radians. The national five essential skills are solving trig equations in degrees. Your teacher will now have shown you how to convert radians to degrees and vice versa. We can use our knowledge of this to rewrite our exact value triangles with radians instead of degrees. See so here we have our 1 root 3 2 triangle with pi over 3 instead of 60 degrees and pi over 6 instead of 30 degrees and also our 1 1 root 2 triangle and instead of 45 degrees we have pi over 4 so these can be rewritten in radians. We use these exact value triangles to answer any non-calculator questions but if the question requires a calculator, we'll need to change our calculator to radian mode. Your teacher will show you how to do this in class. Example 1. Solve 2 cos x plus root 3 equal to 0 for x lying between 0 and 2 pi. So first steps are we're going to rearrange to get cos x equal to negative root 3 over 2. So if cos x is equal to negative root 3 over 2, we're therefore looking for angles in the second and third quadrant. Root 3 over 2 is an exact value, therefore if we draw an exact value triangle out, we're looking for an angle that has an adjacent of root 3, hypotenuse 2, and here we can see it's pi over 6. Now, to get the angle in the second quadrant, it's normally at 180 take away the angle. Because we're dealing in radians, it's going to be pi subtract pi over six. And to get the angle that's in the third quadrant, it's gonna be pi plus pi over six. Now, we may need to do some fraction work and I would encourage you to do this at the side of your page. So here, if we have pi take away pi over six, that's essentially pi over one minus pi over six. If we get a common denominator, it's six pi over six minus pi over six, which gives an answer of five pi over six for our first angle. We also have pi over one add on pi over six, which is six pi over six plus one pi over six, which is seven pi over six. So our final answer here for solving this trig equation is x equals 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Example 2. We have to solve 3 sin x minus 1 equals 0 again for x lying between 0 and 2 pi. So first step is to rearrange. If we rearrange we get sin x equal to positive 1 third. Therefore, drawing our cast diagram, we're looking for angles in the first two quadrants. Now, sin x equal to positive one third, one third is not an exact value. Therefore, here you will need to change your calculator to radian mode. If you do that and do inverse sine of a third, we obtain an answer of 0 0.34. If you have issues obtaining this answer, please see your teacher next day in class. From there, the angle 0 0.34 is in the first quadrant, but to get the angle in the second quadrant, it is pi subtract 0 0.34. Please use your pi button on your calculator. To get a final solution of x equals 0 0.34 or 2.8. Example 3. Solve tan 2x equals 1 for x lying between 0 and 2 pi. So here we've got tan 2x is equal to 1. So if we have 2x, that means 2 waves, therefore 4 angles we need to obtain if we are looking for all of the angles between 0 and 2 pi. It's equal to a positive number, so we're ticking where tan is positive, which is the first and third quadrant. And then from there, drawing our exact value triangle out, um, which has an opposite and adjacent of 1, means we obtain an angle of pi over 4. 
So pi over 4 will be the angle in the first quadrant. But to get the angle in the second quadrant there, it's pi plus pi over 4. Again, we'll need to do some fraction work at the side of our page. So changing pi over 1 to 4 pi over 4 and adding 1 pi over 4 will give an angle of 5 pi over 4. So that's the first two angles, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. But as we have two waves, we need to add 2 pi, a whole wave, to each of these. Again, we'll do some working at the side of our page for this. So firstly, if we look at pi over 4 and we're adding on 2 pi, I'm going to change 2 pi to 2 pi over 1. I then need a common denominator. So I multiply top and bottom by 4, I will get 8 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4, which will simplify down to 9 pi over 4. To get the next angle, I have 2 pi over 1 plus 5 pi over 4. Again, I need to change my 2 pi over 1 to have a denominator of 4. So that will be 8 pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 4. Combining them together will give an answer of 13 pi over 4. Therefore, 2x is equal to pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, the next two angles are 9 pi over 4 and 13 pi over 4. Now, as this is 2x, we need to finally divide everything by 2. But remember, if we divide by 2, that is the same as multiplying by 1 half or multiplying your denominator by 2. So if we do that, we'll have an answer of pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 9 pi over 8, and 13 pi over 8. Example 4. Solve 4 sine squared x minus 3 equals 0 for x lying between 0 and 2 pi. So here what we've got is a quadratic trig equation that we have to solve in radians. So again, first of all, rearranging to get sine squared x equal to 3 quarters, which then we'll need to take the square root of, remembering that we'll have a plus and a minus answer. So sine x is equal to plus or minus root 3 over 2. Drawing our cast diagram and looking for an angle in each of the four quadrants. Root 3 over 2 is an exact value, so we'll draw an exact value triangle out. And we're looking for an angle that has an opposite of root 3 and hypotenuse of 2, which would be pi over 3. So pi over 3 will be the angle in the first quadrant. But to get the angle in the second quadrant, it's pi minus pi over 3. To get the angle in the third quadrant, it's pi plus pi over 3. And to get the angle in the fourth quadrant, it's 2 pi minus pi over 3. This will give us final answers of pi over 3 and then pi minus pi over 3 is essentially 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3 which gives 2 pi over 3. Pi plus pi over 3 is essentially 3 over 3 plus 1 over 3 which is 4 of pi over 3 and then 2 pi minus pi over 3 is really 6 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 which is 5 pi over 3. If you need to do fraction work at the side of your page, please do this. The more um, practice you get of these types of questions, the more you will be able to work this out um, mentally. Example 5. This time again, it's another quadratic trig equation that we have to solve in radians. So, 2 sine squared x plus 3 sine x minus 2. Again, we can write in terms of x squared x and the number at the end to help us factorise. It will factorise to 2x minus 1 and x plus 2. We then replace the x terms with sine x. So going back to our trig equation, that will factorise to 2 sine x minus 1 and sine x plus 2 equal to 0. Next step is then to split the brackets up. 
So we have 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0, which rearranges to give sine x equal to a half. Drawing our cast diagram out, we're looking for sine x equal to positive a half, which is in the first two quadrants. Now a half is an exact value, therefore we'll draw our exact value triangle out in radian terms. And we're looking for an angle with an opposite of 1, hypotenuse of 2, which is pi over 6. So the angle in our first quadrant is pi over 6, and the angle in our second quadrant is pi minus pi over 6. Or another way to think about it is 6 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6, which gives us an answer of 5 pi over 6. Going then to our second bracket, we have sine 2x plus 2 equals 0. This will rearrange to give sine x equal to negative 2. However, there are no solutions to this. Therefore, our final answer to this trig equation is x equals pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. Now try these examples on your own. Please pause the video. And the final answers for these are, for the first equation, x equals pi over 8 or 7 pi over 8. And the second equation, x equals pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. Today we've looked at solving trig equations and radians. To do this successfully, we'll follow the following steps. We're going to use the steps initially that we used for linear and quadratic equations from previous videos. We'll then use the exact value triangles for non-calculator questions. And if we have to, we'll complete working for fractions at the side of our solution. If the angle is not within our exact value triangles, we would use our calculator and need to change it to radian mode. And finally, we always check that our angles lie within the range that is stated.